I haven't seen a movie in 10 days. Scusi, scusi. Dove la vela? Scusi. Scusi. Dove la vela Mekis? Benefits of my film, Hallelujah the Hills. That paid for all of it? Oh, yes, yes. Wow. No, it's not bad. Not bad. Shall we sit down and have some wine? Sure. Okay. Sure, let's lead the way. Taiji. Oh. Cooler here. Yes, it's much nicer. Taiji. Uh, get some wine. Motoscadaio. Uh, David, you, you want uh, white or red? Bianco. Bianco. Ah, si, capisco. Uh, David, do you have some questions for me? Uh, yes, I do, actually. I suppose the first question should be the one on everyone's mind. Are you making another film, or are you a gentleman of leisure now? I'm a gentleman of leisure, but I'm very deep into a project. The father, the son, and the holy cow. It is a new way seeing the Bible. God asked me to do this, so I wrote the script. And uh, the script is blessed. So you were saying the script is blessed? Who, who blessed the script? The script itself is blessed. Oh, so nobody actually blessed it, the Pope or someone? N no! <laughs> you don't have to because it is blessed by itself. And uh, can I read it? Yes. Yes. Well, where can I get it? Uh, you go to www.hallelujaeditions.com. Thank you, Tyson. And get a copy. Ah. And here. And what happens for if the I script. read it? When you read it, you'll go to heaven. Well, that's a relief. Yes, it's guaranteed. For money, eternity. money back if I don't get, go yep. to heaven. Guaranteed for eternity. 
good to know. No money back. So in the film, the character of Vera is portrayed by two different actresses. Right. Yes. There was uh, Summer Vera. Oh, gracias. Uh, and there was Winter Vera. And... Anything else, Adolfo? No. 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 Gracias. Did you need anything else, David? Nothing. <laughs> so uh why did you why did you have two actresses play the part of Vera? Because uh, two people see a woman, a girl differently. In this case, uh, of course, <laughs> these were the memories. So each one remembered the same girl differently. <laughs> Not like <laughs> right, in that obscure uh, object uh, of desire. No, no, yeah, which yes. was 13 years after you did it. Yes, 14. 14, and, wh 14 and, what did, years. and how did you feel about that with, when Buñuel used your device? I love Buñuel, but he stole my idea. <laughs> so what can I do? He's dead. I'm alive. So you win. I win. I'm, you win. I'm alive, he's dead. Here's but I like Buñuel. This is to Buñuel. Yeah, Buñuel, yeah. here. Yeah, Louis, Louis, we miss you. Louis, we miss you very much. Here he goes, bottoms up. Mm. Mm. Lunch is served. Oh, let's go and eat. Leave this. There's only one scene in your film where people are eating, right? And it's uh, it's the Thanksgiving scene, right? Now, uh, in the Thanksgiving scene, it's kind of a ridiculous scene. Are you are you mocking Thanksgiving? Are you mocking eating? Are you mocking no. the way Americans eat? No, I was mocking those two schlunks. This is the first time they meet, and uh, they don't like each other. That's all. Oh, it was a good way of showing the relationship in one scene. Mm -hmm. There was no other meaning. No mockery of anything. No, people are making entire movies where people eat and eat and eat. I wrote a paper on that subject. Yes, uh, it's a big paper, 40 pages long. Oh yeah, could you, could you briefly summarize what's, what's in the paper? How could I? It took me 40 pages to write. Mm. No way. Read it. Is it published anywhere? No. Okay. I was 13 or 14 when I saw my first movie, Captain Blood, and it was fantastic. There were people moving on the screen. We didn't have a screen, we had a <laughs> sheet, bed sheet on the wall in a parish house. And uh, there was ocean, and there were ships moving up and down, and, and then what happened that it would stop moving. People would stop moving and freeze up on the screen. We had no electricity and we had um, a portable generator running the electricity for the projector and generator kept uh, breaking down. So when the people would begin to slow down on the screen, it didn't bother me. I thought that's what cinema is all about. People move, they slow down, they stop, it goes black, again they walk. I had another foggy idea that films were made with cameras, with actors. No. It was magic. It was straight cine magic, what I saw. And um, it changed my life. My movie is better than your movie. Last movie I saw, I was, what, I was 92 years old. Uh, uh, so my memory fails a little bit. And uh, that 10 years ago, I saw the last movie. 
I don't know. It was a movie. Film is no good for your soul, no good for your health. You lose your friends, you, you lose your dentist, because dentist and your lawyer are the first people perhaps to advance the money and friends. Then when they don't get their money back, look, look at my teeth right now, all rotten. No dentist would touch my teeth. Did dentists and lawyers put up the money for Hollow the Hill? Oh yes, yes. My dentist and my lawyer and two good friends, they lost the money. <laughs> no, actually they made lots of money. And you bought lots this, of money. And you bought this villa. Yeah, uh, that's later on when the film became a big success. I have this villa here in Tuscany. I have a house in uh, Oberhausen. And I spent my winters in Rio. What else do you want? I'm happy. Oh, the film was good to me. Film was very good to me. I remember. Who was your first love? <laughs> Lillian Gish, of course. The silent film star? Yes, yes. And who was your last love? Last love? Shimona. You want to see her picture? And who was your love in between? One and only, Paula. Yes. Inspiration. You know that all inspirations come from God. So one day, God spoke unto me, and he said, Adolphus, go make a movie with two schlumps. And a beautiful girl. That's all got, I got. No story, no nothing, just go make it. So, I did it. And which God was that? Was it uh, oh, oh, Muhammad, oh. Buddha? Oh, I know, there are many gods. You know, there's one God, what's known as vegetarian God. But the God that spoke unto me was the one who made the rabbits. That's the real one. What is your religion, Adolphus? I'm a pagan. I worship oak trees, eternal fire, burned in the woods by virgins. Uh, and I have met few of them. Uh, they're still, to this day, in Lithuania, they have fires going in the woods, taken care of by virgins. In 1928, Pope in Rome sent in a commissioned to Lithuania to find out the state of Catholic Church. And they reported back, and this is 80 years ago, said the Lithuanians are not Christians. <laughs> they don't believe in what we believe in. They still worship oak trees, thunder, lightning. Thunder was a big god. That's, you watch out for thunder will strike you down. Do you remember the name of the thunder god? Uh, Perkunas. Parkunas. That's a big one. That's a big one, really. Everybody was afraid of Parkunas. Are you still afraid of Parkunas? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I wouldn't go out, uh, I'll close the doors, lock the windows, and pray. Parkunas, save me, please, please. I didn't do anything wrong, please. I'm good. I'm good. I kiss your feet. I do that every, every time, yeah, when the thunder comes, yeah. So why did Peter Beard run naked in the snow? I had in mind uh, Emmanuel Kant, especially his thesis about the wild animals and rabbits. That's why I did it. Oh, yeah. that, explains, you, that explains everything. You want some wine? No, I have vodka here. Ah, oh, yeah. salute. 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 I can't believe my eyes. <laughs> it's, it's a mirage. We're at City. It's classic. <laughs> Adolphus, let's talk about the girl trees. Two girl trees. Instead of one. Or a 
a forest of girl trees. Ah, it's a good tree. White yes. trees. Ah, uh, that goes back to Schopenhauer. Have you read Schopenhauer? I have not read Schopenhauer. I went to Bard, so I know his name, but I have never read him. Schopenhauer, he wrote about uh, Dunkel's self. And what I was trying to do in a girl tree, to do the Dunkel's self. Where are the girls? Hey, girls, girls. I interpreted this as a girl tree. Dunkel's self is a girl tree. Capisci? Capisci. Yeah, okay. You want okay. Excellent yeah. I know German. Yeah. Marry me. What? Marry me. We've been ah. wasting our young years. Vera. The time has come to say it, Vera. I want your hand. Not yet, alas. I want In the marriage proposals, I was aiming for the emotional truth. And In what is what is the emotional truth? I don't know. I heard an interview on the radio and somebody said, emotional truth. I said, that's fantastic. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you write it down, David. Okay. You could use it someday <laughs> yourself. Emotional truth. <laughs> yes, it's very impressive. You could really stop anybody in their tracks. I said, what is that? Only you know what that is. It's all bullshit. So let's talk about the cake. Why are the, the candles burning? Oh, that, that was a mistake. <laughs> but you kept it in the film. Yeah, I kept all the mistakes in. Uh, and, uh, you know, film critic Dwight MacDonald, he wrote in the Esquire magazine that Antar Mui was a, he won a huge mistake. <laughs> I like him. I like Dwight very much. What about the two guys running with the cake nailed on the board? I don't remember. Was that in my film? Yeah, just before they float it down the river and shoot at it. Oh, oh yes, yes. You remember that was uh, the same cake uh, when they were using it for target practice earlier. Did you notice how many holes, bullet holes, were in the cake? No, I didn't. <laughs> you thought you knew all about filmmaking. All the critics missed the fine points in my film. There were seven bullet holes in that cake. Seven summers and seven winters. And each hole represented a year. So there's a lot of symbolism in the film. Also. No, not symbolism, but clues. I don't believe in symbolism and all that bullshit, no. If you remember where Leo is charging the cows in the field with bandoliers. How many cows were there? Seven. You sure there are only seven cows? It seems like there are a lot more cows than that. There were seven cows because the rest were bulls. If you go and milk those cows, you'll find out which is a cow, which is a bull. The number two, you have two girls, you have two guys, you have two convicts, two seasons, two marriage proposals. There's all this duality in the film. Is the mirroring intentional? No. No. You use the word duality. But for me, everything was one. I had one girl. I had one apple tree. I had one one-eyed horse. I had one of everything. It's like Noah's Ark. One of everything. Right. There was one of everything on Noah's Ark. Yes. Right. One of each sex. So this is a question I'm sure you've heard a lot. Do Jack and Leo die at the end of the movie? Of course they died. They deserve to die. <laughs> they were no good. They're two schlunks. <laughs> also, I had to end the movie somehow. <laughs> so I had to kill them. <laughs> How did you get the idea for the two convicts? It's a movie. It's a movie. Everything happens in the movie. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how they got those pistols there. I didn't do it. Oh, my producer rented them <laughs> from an antique shop. So Jack and Leo were killed with antique. rented antique pistols. <laughs> Which didn't work. <laughs> so Adolphus, we're in Bella Italia ah. on the Mediterranean. But you were in a German prisoner of war camp when you were a teenager. 
Yeah, that was good. That was good. How did that happen? Not that good. That scared. That it wasn't what okay. How, okay. How, how do you end up in your military? See, uh, I was running from the army. I was in the, I was part of them, uh, fighting in the war. In the resistance. The resistance. Okay. See. And uh, they were shelling us. Uh, and uh, the only time you could shoot at the rabbits is when they were firing the machine guns. So you weren't but shooting we the rabbits. rabbits. You were, you were shooting. <laughs> the, you, were, you were shooting in Germany. No, no, the rabbits. The rabbits. Yeah, because I have to. Yeah, because. Mm -hmm. They had to drink rabbit blood. So you were a partisan, but they thought you were a rabbit. No, no, because it took us a long time for them to do that. And uh, so we lived on the rabbit blood most of the time. And uh, okay, I'm mean, so much of a distraction here. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it's yes, no, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't handle this. Hallelujah the Hills went to the Cannes Film Festival. Are you proud of that? That was nice. And also at Locarno Festival, you got uh, a prize there. That was nice. And London and New York Festival? London, New York, Tel Aviv, Bombay, Moscow, uh, Rio. You mentioned about 27 uh, that year alone by invitation and uh, I lost the count after that. And the film was well reviewed in Variety and Time magazine. Yes, uh, Jean Moskowitz in Variety was the first one to review from Cannes Festival, and he set the ball rolling from there on. And the reviews came out from all over the world. Even today in France, Hallelujah the Hills is still playing almost every couple months. As we all know, that Paris is the capital of cinema. Uh, if you s stay in Paris for two months, you could see the entire history of cinema going from one cinema to another. You don't have to buy DVDs. Paris is the world capital of cinema. And Paris liked my film very much, Cahiers de Cinema and Positive and other people really uh, liked it. And it played at Le Pagode for uh, quite a few months. Uh, and uh, I like that. Adolphus, what is your philosophy yeah. of life? Good wine from Montescudaio. Mozzarella, buffala, made same day. The best fish restaurant in Torre del Greco and the blue Mediterranean and cafe in Napoli and grappa, brutta grappa, any place. Without that is Burger King on New York two way. What is film? <laughs> Are you serious? I'm absolutely serious. <laughs> film is something long, <laughs> has sort of <laughs> holes in it. <laughs> uh, I think they call them uh, sprocket? uh, spr spr uh, sprocket holes, yes. And uh, they stretch out sort of, and uh, you have to make those holes, yes. And, uh, uh, and the film becomes, uh, David, I'm running out of bullshit. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, it's time for me to give uh, a dancing lesson to my niece, my favorite niece. What kind? Uh, what kind of dancing lesson? Tap. You didn't know that uh, when I was five years old, I was called uh, Mozart of Tap, and I invented this one step. Uh, that is in the. Guinness Book of Records, uh, attributed to me, of course. What's it called? A mega step. Uh, so I'm teaching my niece, my favorite niece. Uh, uh, you met a few other nieces coming up here, right? A lot of them, yes. Yeah, they're very nice, and uh, I'm privileged to support them.
Okay. Okay. Jordana, now position. All right. Same as yesterday. Okay. Very good. Now, on seven, we go. Okay. Three, seven. Okay. Now do it alone. Okay. Alone. On Ready? three and seven, go. Okay. <laughs> very, very good. Two more weeks and you'll be okay. Okay. Okay, now take a siesta. Okay. I'll see you later. Office, thank you for everything. Oh, it was a pleasure. Grazie. Okay. Also, you don't have to climb the rocks anymore. Oh, good. Uh, tai Chi is waiting by the boat. You see him? Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. He will take you to town. Okay. Grazie. Okay. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.